Hello and welcome to Linda and the Shootalots. We have been cruising slash slamming the west coast of Australia for the last 12 days in Linda, who you can see behind. So to my right or to your left, I have Paul. Shoot a lot. And to my left, to your right, we have Lydia. Shoot a lot. We're just going to recap on our trip, really. We're going to jump straight on in. So if you're planning a trip to the west coast of Australia, then uh, this video is for you. Number one, favorite favorite memory, Lydia. Shoot a lot. My favorite memory so far, because we've still got one day left, but was actually yesterday. We went on a, a boat trip out to go and see the sea lions and their puppies. And we were very lucky that the puppies actually came pretty much right up to the boat and we were able to jump in with them and dive down with them. And it was just a really special experience. And me and Molly actually ended up the last five minutes playing hide and seek with one little puppy that was really fun. We went into all the little reefs nearby. I think that's one of my highlights, definitely. That was a special moment for me. I'm just gonna add on to that because that was also my favorite day yesterday and I think it's important to note that with the Durian Bay tour, they highlight it as the sea, swimming with the sea lions, but the snorkeling part of it actually yeah, was, was amazing. So like, even just as a snorkeling trip, even if you don't like sea lions, yeah. which is hard to not love, but um, that was a really great snorkeling trip. Yeah. And we'd done the Coral Bay snorkeling trip on the Ningaloo Reef. And maybe it was the conditions, probably the conditions, but that reef was definitely my favorite oh, yesterday. So yeah. What about you, Paulie? What was your favorite memory? Apart from waking up to Lydia and myself every morning, of course. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of great memes. Whoa. <laughs> I just caught that because it blew down this way. I put it in here. Oh, it came out of there. I, I picked it up, put it in here. Wow. It's all going on. It's all going on. There's a lot of highlights. Actually, my favorite part, I think, is when we were at Karajini National Park. The second day we were there, we drove on this horrific corrugated road um, in the, and it was so hot and we, we went, yeah, just like outrageous vibrations going on. And we made it to this absolutely ridiculous waterhole at, um, right at sunset and yeah, Hammersley Gorge and basically had the whole place to ourselves and just like swam up on the rocks and just had a really chill time watching the sunset, the dusk. And then on the way back, another like little highlight from that was just stopping in the middle of nowhere, turning all the lights off in the van, getting outside. And it was like the first time you'd seen like the most spectacular sky, like so many stars and oh, that was unreal. We, I want to say we've been lucky, but I actually think it's quite common on the West Coast that there is, you, you just get a lot of sunny days. Like, especially, I mean, we're in December, mid to end of December right now. And we've just had no rain, hardly any clouds, beautiful sunshine. Um, which has worked in our favour sometimes and not so much other times. Like when we were in Karajini, it, it hit 43 yeah. degrees, 43.5 degrees in the day. So yeah, that was a little bit hectic. Yeah, that leads us smoothly into our, yeah. smoothly into our next point, which is that we have done this trip through the start of the summer, which is actually the start of the low season. So the, the peak season here is actually their winter. Um, for reasons like the temperature because <laughs> we were in the National Park which is like the outback of Australia, the west coast and we probably saw like three other cars the whole time and it's like one of the most beautiful places probably in Australia, right? And um, the temperatures reached some very... <sighs> the ranger in the tourist centre when she, she was a bit surprised when we turned up and said that we wanted to stay and we were the only people in the campground, which I can imagine is normally ramoed. Yeah. Knowing now that we've done it in low season, what would be the number one advantage you'd say of coming this time of year to do the road trip? The fact that we've been able to pretty much wing our whole journey and not booking campsites. We've stayed on a lot of free campsites um, and there's a lot of freedom spots you can camp on, um, camp in and yeah, that first come first serve. So I can imagine if we did it in peak time, you'd end up finding, you'd end up spending a lot of time trying to find where you're camping. And we've, yeah, we've just been really lucky. We've just rocked up pretty, pretty late at night and just found a spot really easily. We've may have not had, we may have gone a bit insane at times because we've not, 
been in civilization. The tour, like yesterday with the sea lions, that's a really, it's like, it's on the bucket list that everyone will probably, you've probably even heard of it as you do your research for the West Coast. But we, because it was low season yesterday, we, that's what, like six or eight of us mm. on, on this boat. We well. booked it last minute. So again, we can book tours and campsites last minute. Yeah. And we also, yeah, we there was only eight of us. And I can imagine there's probably like normally 30 to 40 on that boat, plus other boats. So we had a real special experience. Before we did this road trip, we actually did no research at all. And um, having done the route, we've now realized that there are actually some advantages to coming in the peak season, even though you might have less flexibility. It might be a bit more expensive to hire the camper, for example. Um, so Paulie shoots a lot. Mm. What would you say would be the benefit of coming in peak? What have we kind of, or what have you realized? <laughs> this is the technique <laughs> for getting rid of flies. Um, yeah, what would you say is the benefit? Um, so peak season, the weather will be much more favorable. Um, you know, the heat can be incredibly intense um, as it was inland, especially. You know, if we were in tents, it would have been really tough. I'm driving in the heat. Sorry. Driving in the heat, yeah. Um, so the heat's the, I mean, and that's the major, the, the major factor. Um, the wind at this time of year is prevailing southerly quite strong. So it's good because it cools it down a bit on the coast, but it's also, you know, if you, if you want nice calm conditions, um, mm -hmm. you know, if you're into surfing and that sort of stuff, you can't really get visibility, visibility underwater. Um, you know, that wind does, does play a factor. Normally the flies are worse this time of year as well, <laughs> but, but um, we were we were pretty lucky. The wind does keep them away a little bit. It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, but it's definitely there's more flies in the, in the hot season. Pro pro probably the biggest advantage or something that's really important though is um, in the summer, in the off season, things do just completely close. So it's really worth noting. Like we were really lucky. We made it to the last week of Karangini. Um, so, you know, if we were a week later, we just couldn't have gone there. Um, and you know, Dirk Hartog Island had already closed for the for the summer. So if we wanted to go there, and I imagine there's there's more of those as well as you get more into the summer. So mm -hmm. you probably don't, you know, you probably wouldn't recommend going proper proper summer. But the shoulder seasons, you you know, you, you can kind of get away with it before everything closes. So it'd be worth just checking that first. We've got some quick fires here. Mm -hmm. Lydia, shoot a lot. What surprised you the most about the west coast of Australia? how much land there is. I've never experienced anything like it in terms of how barren it is. We drove for miles without seeing anything, just so much of it. I'd say uh, the, the exact same thing. I just can't believe how awesome, like how many awesome locations there are here that are just completely empty. Yeah. Like it's yeah. just in, on the East Coast, you'd have like just be so packed and so popular, but here it's just, there's no one, no one's here. And even like on Shark Bay, so that like reserve, it looks like a little island, but you still are driving on these roads where you can't see anything but barren land in like 360. What's your one top tip for someone planning their WA road trip? I, well, I've not done it without a camper van, but camper vanning is pretty essential. I personally wouldn't do it in a tent, the van is just an easy setup. This van has been amazing. Um, it's actually a six berth. So yeah, we feel quite roomy in there, but we could imagine it with other people in there as well. And I'll add there that if you are my one of my many top tips, I'll put a blog post link with all of my top tips below, but um, would be to, as soon as you know when you're doing a your road trip, book the camper because they get booked up. Like even though this is coming into low season, there's still holidays here in Australia. So they, the, I think these are still booked out. I think the until January. Um, we booked through Rat Pack Travel. I will le leave the link and the exact camper van we've got below. They're an awesome company. Um, they'll beat you on all on the best service, best rates. They'll beat the rates. So um, check them out if you're looking to, to book a camper. Um, another top tip, I would actually really take into consideration like when you're driving in your day. So like even if you want to be really spontaneous with your route, um, we ended up being so spontaneous that we were doing a lot of our drives in the evening, which is good because it's cooler for driving, but um, you do have to be aware of um, wildlife and um, if you want to get up for those beautiful sunrises, um, you, won't have much time for you won't have much time for sleeping. Um, it, and also the Google Maps will say that something's like three or four hours, but they're not always taking into account the road conditions. So a lot of the roads are sealed but some of them are and a lot of them are corrugated so especially in a big camper like this it can take a lot longer than say a 
you know, a, a speedy little four by four jobby? I would say leave some like ad lib time. Like, so a little bit of time where you can, you know, you don't book anything in. If you're, if you're planning, talk to as many people as you can. Um, but then also when you get to the location, chat with the locals and chat with the, like the information, the, like the different visitor centers and that sort of thing. Cause you get so many good tips. They can hook you up with all the, like the perfect tours that you might not be able to find online and get those, those, those local tips essentially. Amazing. Okay. Well, in terms of our itinerary and the, the route we did, I will leave the blog post link below so that you can see exactly what we did. Um, you'll see the top tips for WA2 and also linking the Australia Google Map Legends. So that is all the, all the spaces we've been on any of our trips in Australia, but um, this one will be pinned on there. To finish off, before we close out this shoot a lot family video, one thing that you would do differently if you were to plan and do this road trip again. We have done this trip in 12 days and we've covered a lot of ground, thousands of miles. We've been very lucky that there's three of us, so the actual mixing the driving between us hasn't been too stressful. We've kind of done two or three hours each, each day and um, for the longer drives. I wouldn't change the route at all, but I would extend for another three or four days. Um, I would agree. Sometimes when you're moving quick, you're, you, you don't really get to really sink in and really appreciate where you are so much. Um, so just an extra couple of days, but to be honest, yeah, the, the route was amazing and the spots were amazing. We ticked them all off. Maybe I would have extended and done another week and gone down to Margaret River because I feel like you kind of have to choose north or south. Yeah. Paulie, anything you'd do differently? Maybe like check the weather forecast um, and, you know, if you've to, to try and like, if, you've, if your trip can be flexible in terms of your route, um, just because, for example, I know we didn't have a choice with Kieran Genie because it was closing and you know we wanted to get the drive out of the way first but like we kind of hit there when there was when there was an extreme heat wave we might have been like okay that's pretty silly let's do it the other way around anyway but there was a big a big temperature difference when we were driving out from Karajini back to the coastline we drove for was it eight hours and it dropped 15 degrees so yeah it went from 45 to 30 if my that, maths that is correct that temperature change happened in about the last we were celebrating the thermometer going down on, in the van. We were like, 38, 36, 30, oh my God. Then we saw the ocean. Oh God, was like breathing for the first time. Lovely. All around, just an amazing trip. Um, there's, there's definitely advantages to doing peak and off peak. Um, book up your camper, plan, read all the blog posts below and you're off. Get a couple of good mates. These ones will do go. and you're off. That's it today from Linda and the Shooter Lots. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>